Uh, and the big black line uh, going at a 45 degree angle is the uh, terrestrial fractionation line. All the samples on the Earth, whether they're uh, humans or petunias or rocks or the air uh, or seawater, falls along this line, the TF line or the terrestrial fractionation line. Uh, we can see that the lunar materials fall along the same line, too, because the moon has the same oxygen isotopic composition as the Earth. Uh, we can see that Mars is a little bit above the line. Uh, let's look at the two axes. The y-axis over there is little delta 17O. Let's think of it essentially as the ratio of O17 to O16, and the bottom would be the ratio of O18 to O16, uh, essential. Um, and so when you divide it that way, it's called a three isotope plot for that reason, because everything is normalized to O16. Um, and as you move to the lower left, you're getting to more O16 rich samples. Uh, the CAIs we see are falling on that other line, the one that has the CVs, CK, COs, and so forth on it. Uh, that's the CAI line, essentially the carbonaceous chondrite anhydrous minerals or CCAM line. Uh, there the CAIs fall along it, and a lot of the bulk carbonaceous chondrites fall along it too, except for CIs, which we see is above the terrestrial line and over at the upper right. That's because they've been very aqueously altered with water with heavy oxygen isotopes in it, which creates it over there. But if you take the very few pristine minerals from the sea eyes, like some olivine or pyroxene crystals, and you analyze their oxygen isotopes, they're back down there with the rest of the carbonaceous chondrites down at O16 rich land, uh, where the CVs and COs are, for example.